DNA is a human blueprint passed down from our parents. The molecules strung together in our DNA sequence determine hair color, height, dimples, and disease risk. But it's become clear over the last you know, few years that this is not the only source of information that can be transmitted from one cell to the next or from one individual to the next generation. And that's where the concept of epigenetics arises. Epigenetic changes happen based on environmental influences. If DNA is a blueprint, the process of epigenetics can be thought of as the general contractor, reading the blueprints and determining which part of the project gets completed and when. Depending on the environment the epigenetic contractor works in, he might make some alterations that don't necessarily change the DNA blueprint, but slightly modifies the finished product. And sometimes these alterations can get passed down from generation to generation. Epi is from the Greek for above, and genetics is genetics. So uh, epigenetics is that level of regulation that is sort of on top of the genetics. It's the way that cells or organisms transmit information that's not encoded in the DNA sequence. Doctors Mary Elizabeth Patty and Elvira Escanatis study epigenetics in pregnancy at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center. So what do these have to do with type 2 diabetes? Well, diabetes is the classic disease that's caused by a combination of genetics and environmental influences. And the uterus, where babies grow, is as much an environment as any other. Babies and mothers' metabolisms and nutrition are intricately linked during pregnancy, so if the mother is malnourished or consuming too many calories, the baby will be too, affecting the way certain bits of DNA are read. So this concept arose from a number of very elegant studies um, performed in the 1900s. There were um, uh, parts of the Netherlands that were um, exposed to severe famine during World War II. Uh, it's called the Dutch Hunger Winter. Um, and from following up those populations, you know, decades later, they found that individuals whose mothers had been exposed to famine um, went on to develop higher rates of type 2 diabetes and um, obesity. And so the question arose, how could this be? Why would this occur? That has really spurred the quest for figuring out what marks might be in our cells that are reflecting the history of what happened to us during development. For example, if a mother has poor nutrition during pregnancy, studies show some babies are born with more fat cells and fewer muscle cells, increasing the risk of type 2 diabetes. Traditionally, these types of epigenetic changes were thought to be exclusively maternal territory. But more recently, it's been shown also that the father can influence risk for the baby to develop metabolic disease. Some animal studies show fathers eating a low-protein diet or who are obese at conception pass similar malnourishment markers to their babies. And these aren't single-generation effects. There's evidence that grandparents' diets count too. Most of the research has happened in animals so far. But there are some suggestive human studies as well. And I think it's really going to be an interesting challenge for us to say, how can we optimize parents' health in order to optimize the health of the baby. Dr. Patty's lab wants to use this information to identify at-risk people before they start presenting with type 2 symptoms. Ongoing studies look for nutrients that could be supplemented to mitigate the damages of malnourishment during pregnancy. One good marker of uh, intrauterine life exposures is birth weight. And although that's not um, everything, um, it's, it would be important for everyone to know their birth weight. While it's not final, prematurity or a particularly high or low birth weight could be a risk factor. As a mother myself, you know, have, with two young boys, um, you know, when you're you're pregnant with uh, with a baby, you really want to feel as though you're doing everything you can during that pregnancy. And my hope, at least, is that the type of research that we're doing uh, will allow us to sort of mitigate some of the risks that some you know, pregnant mothers might be exposed to, or um, at, a, at, a, at a very minimum, better understand how um, a mother's environment um, can contribute to health in the offspring.